What's going on guys? This is Eric again with Olympic Health Physics and today we're going to be talking about something that you just might not know about your Siemens Gamma Camera Quality Control. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the very popular uh, widespread Siemens Symbia and this conversation is going to cover every version of Symbia that's out there because uh, for for our purposes they all sort of operate the same um, but what we're going to be talking about is uniformity and how do we evaluate the uniformity images on a Siemens gamma camera and there's one aspect of evaluating the uniformity images that a lot of technologists don't really know and the reason is is because it's buried in the quality control portion of the manual so for nuclear medicine technologists oftentimes you're taught to evaluate the quantitative part of the uh, uniformity analysis by looking at the numbers and making sure that it's less than five percent that's a general rule of thumb but for the Siemens system there are actual uh, values or limits that are associated with each of the four quantitative metrics that we get and so we're going to dive into the quality control manual and show you what those are and show you why it's important so let's go ahead and dive right into the quality control portion of the Symbia operators manual within the operators manual there is a quality control and assurance section of the manual it starts on page 255 uh, in this particular version I'm going to scroll down to page 290. In 290, page 290, we show uh, in the manual what the actual value should be for integrated CFOV, UFOV, and then the differential CFOV and UFOV. And you, we can see from these numbers that they're not all 5%. They actually do have different criteria. Why do they have different criteria? Well, the reason that they have different criteria is because each one of those measurements actually is measuring a different uh, physical aspect of the image. I'm not going to go into detail on what those are, but just understand that it is measuring something. Each of these four numbers are actually measuring something different, uh, a different aspect of the uniformity within the image. For the integral UFOV, the value is 6%. For the integral CFOV, it's 5%. For the differential UFOV, it's 3%. And for the differential CFOV, it's 2.5%. Now, these are all the intrinsic values, okay? So these values, they're going to be different for extrinsic, and we're going to get to the extrinsic. But this is just for the intrinsic values, and this is for 10 million counts, okay? So when you do your a 10 million count flood intrinsically, these are the, the criteria that we should be holding the camera too. So now going to back to the manual, we're going to flip over to page 301 because on page 301 we show the extrinsic values and they are slightly different. We still have 6% and 5% for the integral uh, CFOV and UFOV. However, for the differential, now we're at 4% and 3.5%. So slightly higher on the extrinsic differential CFOV and UFOV. Okay, so whenever we're doing our flood images, we need to make sure that we're looking at the intrinsic uh, criteria for any intrinsic floods that we're doing, and we should be look, uh, looking at the extrinsic criteria for any extrinsic floods that we're doing. Again, these are for 10 million count floods, and this is for the intrinsic verification or the extrinsic verification. So not for the calibration. The calibration's uh, gonna be different. It's gonna be in the seven to 10% range, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, but what I wanna do now is I wanna actually show you some images, and we can analyze them and see what we need to do with them. So here we have an intrinsic verification. This is from a Siemens Symbia, and we can look at each of the numbers. And the reason that, that I bring this up is because there's no indication on the screen here, on this image, that this flood actually didn't pass one of the criteria. Well, which criteria did it not pass? Let's just do a side-by-side -side against what the intrinsic values are 
versus what we actually uh, calculated or measured. So we're fine with everything here except for this differential CFOV. The differential CFOV is 3.19%, yet the criteria is 3%. So there's no indication, and this is somewhat problematic with the Siemens systems because you don't actually know whether you pass or fail the criteria automatically. You have to apply the criteria from the manual to determine whether or not you pass or fail the, um, the test. So if you have a value that fails like this, 3.19% when the criteria is 3%, what do you do? What do you do with that? Um, what I usually recommend to people to do is to, first of all, go through a tuning and uh, peaking. Go through the tuning and peaking exercise. Do all of those things that you can uh, run before you get to the uniformity test and then rerun the flood. Oftentimes that'll correct uh, the issue. If that doesn't correct the issue, you can go back in and rerun an, uh, an intrinsic calibration. When you run an intrinsic calibration, we sometimes call that a high count flood. With the Siemens systems, you need to do at least 120 million counts. Oftentimes they're, they're set to 200 million counts and they can take a little bit of time to do that. But when you're redoing that intrinsic calibration, you're gonna smooth out any uh, non-uniformities that you see in the intrinsic verification. When you do the intrinsic calibration, that also has a criteria that's associated with that. And we can also find that in the manual. So for intrinsic calibrations, we say that they can compensate for values up to about 10%. But if you exceed 7% for the calibration, not the verification, but for the calibration, which is the high count, then you need to contact uh, service. If your intrinsic calibration passes and you don't see any issues, you're below the 7% on the intrinsic calibration, now you can rerun your intrinsic verification or daily flood and see if you, you pass those values. If you are still not passing those values, that's the point that you should probably contact either service or contact your physicist to try to get some direction on what it is that you need to do um, in order to get your camera to pass the manufacturer uh, stated specifications for the uh, intrinsic and extrinsic uh, verifications or daily floods. All right, so I know that that can get a little bit confusing. We're talking about calibrations and verifications and intrinsics and extrinsics. Here's the thing to remember. The thing to remember is you are doing daily floods, either intrinsic or extrinsic. Those floods are going to have some acceptable criteria that's associated with it, which you can find in the manual. And it's not necessarily going to turn red if it fails on the screen. A lot That's a misconception I've heard a lot is that as long as it doesn't turn red, you're gonna be fine. That's actually not true uh, with the Siemens systems. Um, you have to pay attention to what the values are and evaluate that against what's in the manual to determine whether or not your uniformity images are actually passing the manufacturer specifications. And from there, there are a couple tools that you have in your tool belt with uh, doing tuning and peaking exercises, going through and doing a high count or uh, intrinsic calibration uh, to try to correct any non-uniformities. And if all else fails, you can always call service or contact your physicist and they should be able to help you out. Okay, thanks for sticking with me through this one. If you have any questions about Siemens gamma cameras or quality control on, on Siemens systems, Feel free to uh, shoot us a note or drop a comment uh, in the comment section and we'll be happy to help you out.